All right, so I wanted to go ahead and get these out of the way. This is a quick review in the Lockjaw Collars. I've been using these for several months and you guys ask about them each video. So I figured I'd go ahead and let you know what I think about them. Now, I got these for $30 on amazon.com. And the reason I picked them up is just because I found that typically in most gyms and my gym included, the standard collars they provide you don't really hold up so well when doing heavy movements like deadlifts. You can see right there, the old ones fall off. And you see the Lockjaw Collars here with 500 pounds on deficit deads and no problem whatsoever. So I don't have any issues with these falling off or becoming loose and again for 30 bucks can't really go wrong throw these in your gym bag like i do they also make a pro version which is like six dollars more and has a locking mechanism on them that i don't really find necessary hey what's up everybody welcome back brandon again in the car outside the gym it is a jacked and tan day and i thought i'd take this time to just explain a little bit about this program because I think some of you are misunderstanding some of the aspects of it. So the last video I put up was a combination of a bench video and a squat video. I'm getting lost right here in this, this song. I'm not hip with the rap game, so I have never heard this song. Tyga and Young Thug, hookah. Tangent over. But anyway, so for my bench day, it was actually a lot of volume and it's not always that way. And then on my squat day, I had mentioned I did like 20 sets of squats. That's not how the day was programmed. The day was programmed to only do eight working sets of squats and then move on. However, if you guys remember, I did note that I wanted to play around with my actual form and technique. So what I did is I dropped the weight and I just kept adding sets. I didn't have anything in mind. It just so happened that when I got to 20, I was like, shit, I should probably stop doing this. And I did. So the days aren't always like that, Mike has it set up so some days have a lot of volume, some days not. Case in point today, which is a jacked and tan day, I only have three exercises to do. So three back exercises. Usually he'll also throw in some biceps in there as well. You know, some curls for the girls. But today it's not the case. So just three exercises. So it should be a pretty quick video, um, which in addition to my other videos that are a little bit more private, the fappening, luckily I wasn't affected by that celeb status not even once, those videos might also be fairly quick if you know what I'm saying. So let's get in the gym and get to it. All right, so today wasn't too volume filled, so I figured I'd just take a clip of the first working set on each exercise that I did. Started off with pendle rows. Now I've been trying to work these in more often than bent over rows, just because I feel like the aspect of being explosive and powerful will transfer better over in powerlifting. Now for these, however, I really wanna to try to keep a little bit of a straight back, which I think I do a fairly good job of here. I did three sets of 20 here with 135, so the weight wasn't very heavy, but when you get towards that 20th rep, and just even on the first set, it was brutal. So definitely felt a good burn in my lats all day today. So from there, we moved on to lat pull downs. Now, I don't usually like to do a lot of this exercise only because typically if I do something like this where it's a very vertical movement, I'd rather do weighted pull-ups or weighted chin-ups. I just forgot my brute belt at home, so I didn't have really a way to do that. So I figured lat pull-downs would be best for me. Three sets of 10 here. I believe the weight's just 200 pounds. Again, had a pretty sick back pump at this point, bras. But what I've found for me personally with lat pull-downs, I like to use somewhat of a medium grip, so right where the bar starts to bend is where I like to wrap my mitts around. Then for this, for these self-proclaimed Campbell rows, wipe the bench down, then I figure, you know what? Safety first, let's wipe the wiener down too. Yeah, gotta be safe, gotta use that protection. But we moved on to this, again, three sets here, 80 pounds, 10 reps each. Now this is less weight and less reps than what I'm used to doing, but however, by this point, said back pump was taking an effect on me and I just really couldn't do anymore, even though I really wanted to on the inside. But still a fairly good back workout for the day. It's quick and easy, but still, back was on fire. All right, so left the gym. I'm actually in front of Staples right now. I had to make some copies as well as pick up a few mailing supplies. The reason being is I am getting rid of some of my older PS4 games, the ones that I've beaten I don't play anymore. That's my really big problem with video games. Something like this when it comes out is 60 bucks, and then like in a couple weeks it's pretty much useless. So I'm trying to get rid of some of my older games that I don't play anymore just to make a couple of dollars off of them. So I've been selling a lot. I'm pretty much only gonna keep the current games I play. That being said, what's come to mind is something like Gamefly. So if anyone out there does Gamefly or anything like that, let me know what you guys do about games. Typically, I don't like to buy games brand new, just again, because they cost 60 bucks. I don't think they're worth that, not to mention I don't have a ton of time to play. So I'd rather kind of buy games after they're a couple of months old, and that way they're cheaper, and I don't really feel as bad about spending money. But the problem with the PS4 and even the Xbox One is there's not a ton of good games out there, and there's not a ton of games that have been out for a long time that are any decent. So there's a problem. So if you use Gamefly or something like that that's similar, let me know. Um, otherwise, I guess I'm just fucked. That's why I gotta do all the shitty YouTube ads. 
semi-serious. But I'm gonna run to the post office, mail this out, and then uh, we'll talk to you guys in whatever the next clip is, which I have no idea what that's going to be. I will say, and I'm sure I said it in the commentary, even though that workout we just got done was pretty short, three exercises, anywhere from 10 to 20 reps, beat the hell out of my back. Those back pumps are no fucking joke. So we'll talk to you soon. All right, back in the car, and actually not outside the gym, hence, v-net crew checking in i'm actually outside the dentist's office so i have a dental appointment today that six month teeth cleaning not a very pretty grill i know but it gets the job done it lets me eat on them gains so we're gonna get this done uh and because i'm at the dentist and it's kind of in the middle of the day i get to work from home today got some video editing to do i'm probably gonna hit the gym during my lunch hour we got some chest work to do not as volume filled as last time but this will be good so i'll check in with you after the dentist and before the gym got this pre-workout over here marinating ready to go but probably not a good idea to go into a dental office where you have to sit still and they clean your teeth hopped up on pre-workout so we'll check with you soon so I lied, and I'm sorry. You didn't see another clip before the gym, but what we started off here was with some speed work. So the goal today was to do six sets of three, and I decided to keep the weight at 245 again, just really trying to move the bar fast. And I only recorded the first set on these also just because since the weight's not moving up, figured you guys probably just don't wanna see it. But it felt pretty good. After those six sets, we moved on to four sets of three with the slingshot, added 50 pounds, so this is 295. Again, just showing you the first set here. This went pretty well. I think I probably should have moved the slingshot up just a little bit more so it was more on my elbows. But again, things were going pretty good. From there, I moved onto a superset of seated dumbbell shoulder press and some face pulls. Here you see my first working set. So we did four sets of 10 with 60 pounds. Yes, I do train shoulders. I just don't normally film on those days only because I don't feel like it's really that necessary. But look at that face, I'm trying to keep it calm and cool collected. And then said face pulls, didn't feel like showing it so. And who doesn't like a squirrel on water skis? All right, so that just happened. And again, the reason I threw that in there only because I figured you guys didn't want to see my face pulls with bands. I did four sets of 20. Now, of course, you can always find out more in-depth information on any of these workouts if you want to follow me in Fitocracy. It's always linked in the description box. But after those shoulder supersets, we moved on to arm supersets. So we did four sets of 10 of these skull crushers with somewhere between 110 to 115 pounds. I say that because it really depends on how much the bar weighs. And even though I weighed it last week, I already forgot how much it weighed. But I felt pretty good with those. Elbows weren't hurting. I know a lot of people don't like to do them because of that. I never really seemed to have that much of an issue. We then moved on to some standing alternating dumbbell curls. These are with 45 pounds, again, four sets of 10. So you're actually gonna see 20 reps when it's all said and done, but since it's alternating, that would be 10 reps each for you math whizzes out there. And again, I normally haven't trained a lot of arms with Dan, so working with Mike, he has arms, I think twice a week or so, so it's been a nice change of pace, trying to actually get these pipes up and running although I'm not really happy with how I'm flaring my elbows out, it looks like a little bit on these. So after watching this back in between sets, I made sure to correct that. So there you go, as always, thanks for watching, and in the meantime, stay big.